sissy boy Most days you wish you were invisible What's the point of trying when you don't fit in? They never let you forget it, wish it would end All you know is that you can't breathe You got a hole in your heart where love should be Where can you run away? How can you live a lie? You just don't recognize the light inside But don't you ever give up Because in time it gets better, babe Hi there, welcome to Happy Hour with Cameron Steele. This is Misty Blue, otherwise known as Michael Reese. First order of business, though, what would you like to drink? Mimosa would be lovely. That sounds fabulous. I heard Nick? mimosa. Oh. <laughs> and he knows specialty. his cue. <laughs> it's so difficult to make, so, you know. So mimosa for you. And... I'll have my usual. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much, You're Nick. Welcome. Let's get right to it. Uh, you were born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is that right? right? Born and raised? Born and raised. What was that like? It was a small town, but a big city. Uh, <laughs> everybody knew everybody. Okay. Um, I grew up in a community where neighbors, everybody knew your mother and father, and you could do no wrong because you would get told immediately oh. about it. Um, but it also was a very safe neighborhood. Okay. So I, very, I felt very secure growing up. Um, so you went to school uh, back east in Pittsburgh as well, college yes. and everything too? Everything from kindergarten through 12th grade at Catholic school. Catholic school. With what was that like? And, uh, it was very strict. My grandparents owned a produce store in the neighborhood and he used to deliver produce to the convent. So we could do really no wrong. Uh, we were constantly under supervision of the nuns. They really knew the nuns. The nuns and... would come to family dinners. and. We would go to their dinners. So and you couldn't was, screw up at we all. We could not screw up at all. <laughs> Did you ever screw up? I have to say no. I was I was a pretty good kid growing yeah. up. My sister and I had a lot of fun. Uh, we were very close growing up. Did your sister ever um, help you with any of your looks or anything? No, actually, I talked to her this morning, okay. and she said that um, she's very jealous of my look. Oh, interesting. Because I look better than her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look anything like her? Do you see her when you put the Absolutely. The on? Absolutely. Oh. So I have to ask. This look is beautiful, gorgeous. How long does that take you? Uh, currently, my time is about 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yes. You can pull this off in 45 minutes. Yes. It takes me an hour and a half to walk out the door and sweat. <laughs> How do you do smoke it? Smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> so you have pre-planned looks and a whole technique down, or what, what do you Pretty do? Pretty much it's a, it's a set. Um, you do it so often oh, yeah. that you just get into a routine, and you can put a face on and get ready out the door. Misty Blue was born about three years ago. Um, I was very much a part of the imperial court system here in San Francisco, uh, which is the mother court of the international court system. Uh, we have over 65 chapters worldwide. But I got started uh, volunteering during a campaign for an emperor candidate who ended up winning. We do fundraising throughout the city. We go to other cities and help them raise funds. Um, and it's just a good charitable organization. It's a 5013C. And we support any organization in need, any okay. nonprofit. If you call us up, can you do a fundraiser for us? We are in need somebody in our organization will step up. Oh, that's, that's great. So it's not just one organization. You do many. We do many organizations. What are the ones that you work with the most? Uh, St. Aidan's Food Pantry here yeah. in the city. They yeah. feed a lot of families in the area. Um, Night Ministry, which is a crisis intervention, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for anybody in need. But if it's anything from PAWS to the uh, ASPCA, the whatever the need is, um, somebody needs medication money or there's a fire in somebody's home or they can't afford anything, we will step up to the plate and help them out. Just stepped off the board because um, I have aspirations coming up next year. Oh, aspirations to? Um, there are positions in the court system of emperor or empress uh -huh. people can run to. It's a public vote. Um, and I do have aspirations to become an empress. I would love to do a scholarship fund. And I think the way to do that is to make it easier for me to do that is becoming empress. I can do a yearly scholarship fund for somebody, a teenager, whether it be LGBT youth who uh, needs the assistance, um, doing a lot more outreach. Mama Jose founded 
the Imperial Court in 1965. Correct. How did that come about, and how big has it gotten since? Uh, Mama Jose, as we fondly refer to her as, um, was at a ball called the Arts Ball that the Tavern Guild at the time put on. The Tavern Guild was a group of gay bars and uh, liquor wholesalers that worked together because of the harassment the gay community was getting from police at the time in the 1960s, mm. 50s and 60s. Right. Um, so Jose was part of that. She helped start that organization. In 1962, she ran for and uh, was the first openly gay politician to run for city of San Francisco, and uh, she lost, but had city supervisor. City supervisor okay. had six thousand votes, so they knew then that's that the gay I mean, community big. was not going away. And she was the first in the United States to run for public office as an openly gay. Okay. Um, she went to this ball in 1964 and won this contest, and she said, "She's already a queen. She is now Her Royal Majesty." Empress Juan Jose, uh, the Widow Norton. Why Widow Norton? Back in the 1800s, there was a very well-known person named Emperor Norton. He went by Norton. Um, he was a very wealthy man. He uh, declared himself Emperor of the United States of Mexico. And he would walk through the streets of San Francisco. He would create his own money. Shop owners would honor that money. He would make decrees. It's one of his famous decrees was no person shall name the city Frisco, or they would be fined $25 by his court. I am on board with that. Some of the people in the city looked down on him uh, because he was so eccentric. And when he got arrested, um, the entire city, most of the businesses that honored him were so irate. And the mayor finally just released him and said, the businesses can't. protested. The businesses protested. So he um, ended up passing away on the streets of San Francisco. Um, this was before the time of ambulance and quick response, um, and he died in front of Old St. Mary's Church in Chinatown. Wow. Jose then um, called herself the Widow Norton because she was self-appointed and, and her, like, was suffered uh, police harassment just like he did. Um, so there, I think there was that connection. Okay. Um, years later, the Imperial Court of San Francisco um, got the rights to uh, move Emperor Norton's body to the Colma Cemetery site. Mm -hmm. And so Jose, each year with the new Emperor and Empress, would make a pilgrimage up to that gravesite and honor Emperor Norton. That's for the emperors to pass on the tradition of, I was, I'm stepping down, this is for your reign now. And that was the tradition of doing it at the gravesite. Misty actually invited me to come and do that walk, that <laughs> widow's walk with her and the group, with, with Mama Jose, because it may have been this year, which was just a month ago or so, a little more, um, may have been Mama Jose's last visit. She's getting up there. She's been doing this since 65, so how old is she now? We celebrated her 90th birthday with a big gala here in San Francisco in wow. December. That's amazing, and still going strong and sharp as a tack. Funny, funny, funny person. There's some quotes. Can you do justice? I, I almost want to do like the whole thing. Like, can you just give me some of the most famous quotes from, from that day? The most famous quote um, that we know and all love is um, united we stand divided they get us one by one <laughs> and Jose's okay. been talking about this saying this quote since the 1960s in reference to the police and their aggravation towards gay community and the public um, that disapproves of the gay community um, it, it's a strong message and it's still prevalent today you know, united we stand, divided they get us one by one. What message would you like to send to the gay youth that may be having issues with coming out of the closet or dealing with uh, Catholic school or coming out to their families? We were very fortunate uh, to have something called the It Gets Better videos. Um, but that's not enough. You know, with, unless somebody outreaches to those kids, they'll never know that it's really okay and it will get better. 
they need role models. They need people out there to look up to and inspire them. Mm -hmm. uh, I strongly feel that this needs to start at the school level with guidance counselors, people that are educated to accept people, not put them down for who they are. We could do so much more than we're doing. Uh, it does get better, and life is what you make of it. You know, suicide is never an option. You, it's a decision you can't go back on. Right. Um, I'm a psychiatric nurse. I've been for 16 years in the field. And it's one of the things that people come in and they're so ambivalent about. And when they do it, they never know if what's going to be the right decision or not. Um, so don't give up. Keep fighting and know that somebody's out there. Get on a bus. Come to San Francisco. Welcome to our bubble. We will accept you. <laughs> come live in the bubble with us. There's plenty of room. There's no parking, but there's room for everyone. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Cheers, Cheers to Misty you. Blue and to the Imperial Court and to Mama Jose. Oh. <laughs> Another day.